All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Forge Your Life podcast here today with your host, Richard Fu from richardfu.com and The Ultimate Man. And today, I have a special guest on. She's, she excites me because I've seen her stuff. I've seen her videos. She just comes across with so much confidence on the video. It excites me to have her on here. I know she's going to take over this show because she also runs her own podcast. Her name is Christina Cantus. She's the founder of the C Method. The C Method is all about helping people speak and be more confident with themselves so they can just actually communicate more effectively. And I know for a matter of fact that for all the guys listening here, we need to tune in on this. So do not skip this episode, guys, because Christine is going to share some amazing secrets on how to be more confident and able to communicate more effectively to everyone else that matters in your world. So guys, please welcome Christina Cantors. Christina, good to have you on. Thanks, Richard, for having me. I feel like there should be some sort of canned applause. Sound <laughs> effect. Do you have that? <laughs> no, but we'll create it on the Yay! show. Yay! Yeah, let's, yeah, let's do that. Of course. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, awesome. And Christina, <laughs> now for the people who haven't heard about you and your work before, could you get, give us a bit more details about how you actually help people become more confident and communicate more effectively? Sure. Well, firstly, thanks for having me on. It's awesome to be here. And you summed it up pretty well, actually. I, I help people, mostly young professionals and business owners, to be more confident and effective when they speak. And when I say speak, this could be public speaking, speaking to a group, or in networking situations, or at work, and having having conversations in in general. Because it, when people can't communicate well, when they don't know how to express themselves or explain what they do or explain how they're feeling, it holds them back at work. It prevents them from moving up in their careers and it holds them back from growing their business if, if that's what they do. Mm. And I do mostly individual coaching and I also run workshops. And, I, and like you mentioned, I, I have a podcast. It's called Stand Out, Get Noticed. And you can subscribe to that in iTunes. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I like, to, I like to lead by example. See, I believe that anyone can learn to be more confident and I don't just tell people what to do. I show people how I'm building my own confidence and I do my own comfort challenges and then I document those on the podcast. So, for example, I did stand-up comedy in New York City once. That was one of the scariest things I've ever done. I recorded that, made a podcast about it. Um, I went skydiving, recorded that, made a podcast about it. So this is, this is what I like to do. Um, and, and show people that you don't need decades of experience to be a great speaker. You can learn these things and implement things right now to help you be a little bit better than yesterday and then tomorrow be a little bit better than today. Oh, beautiful. I love that, Christina. So talk us through this. I mean, like, obviously you didn't, you know, you weren't born just loving being in the uncomfortable zone, I'm guessing. And so talk us through your story and how you actually started <laughs> building yourself up to become more confident and then to just learn to live and love the uncomfortable zones. So start, where did it all start for you? <laughs> when did it start for me? Um, look, when I was an architect, I was very much about follow the path, right? Mm -hmm. I went to a, a private school, private girls school. It was like, you, you know, it, the point was, you know, you got to get a really high high grade at the end of year 12 and then go to a good university, get a good degree. You know, I got my master of architecture, got a job at a large corporate architecture firm. I was, I was very much fixed on, you know, I'm going to become director of this company. I was always quite ambitious. Um, but that, but I realized now that I was following the path that society had sort of mapped out for me. That was what I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And when I was, it was about two and a half years, three years in to my career, I became a qualified architect. And it was then that I realized that I didn't want to be an architect anymore. Yeah. And I started plotting my exit. And a big, uh, a big turning point for me was reading the book, The 4-Hour Workweek. Mm. And that really opened my eyes up to this whole concept of you don't have to do what everyone else is doing. You know, there are better options out there. And why would you give your precious time away to someone else who doesn't 
appreciate you who, you know, you, all you have to do is the bare minimum to not get fired and they'll still pay you the same amount. And when that occurred to me, it was a complete shift in my mindset. And that's when I started to plot my exit. And you could say that that was, that was one of the first big things that I did outside my comfort zone. Um, but I managed to learn how to trust myself in those big decisions through a, um, a breakup that I had with a long-term partner. Like it was like a, a year or two earlier. And that was probably the first really, really difficult thing I had to do that was way outside comfort zone. But that experience taught me to trust um, those big decisions with my gut. So mm-hmm. for me doing those big things, the, Became, it was actually not it was actually not that difficult for me yes it was outside my comfort zone but I think I, I knew deep down in my in my heart in my gut that it was the right thing to mm. do so I know we're getting very like very like high level here because there's because then there's all sorts then there's other things that that's like you know um, striking up a conversation with a stranger that also is outside my comfort zone you know so it's yeah there's there's, there's so many different you know, so many different aspects of this. I <laughs> ah, love it and love it. And I love how you go into the detail of it. And there's one question that burned inside of me, Christina, when you're telling that story is, you know, you, you were building your life up to be this architect and this whole idea of what society and maybe what your parents or whoever else told you you should have been. And then what was the point where you're like, you know, you made the decision to say, I don't want to be like this anymore. So then I want to get into the real crux of it here. It's like, how many times did you go back and forth and go, oh, but I did everything here. Like, you know, you, you've invested so much time, so much effort to be where you're at. And then you're like, oh, but if I do this, it's like unsafe. Like, how did you get through that period? Oh, that's a good question. You know what? With that decision, it really didn't tear me up inside, oh, frankly. Yeah. It was a very easy decision for me. Um, I figured that, yes, I've spent all these years at university and, and working, but I thought it's, I don't, it might be a, wa- a waste of that amount of time, but would I rather waste the rest of my life doing something that I don't love to do? You know, mm-hmm. it's like, yes, it might be, oh, six years, but then what's the rest of your life? Mm-hmm. And at the same time, like when I graduated high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do. If you told me, Christina, you're going to run your own business and you're going to coach these people and you're going to be a speaker and I'd be like, F off. Like, <laughs> there's no way. I didn't have, you know, I didn't have the confidence. Mm-hmm. I didn't have the knowledge. I didn't know where my true value lay. Mm-hmm. And it took me that amount of time to come to that realisation. Mm-hmm. I will tell you this, though, when I was going through this breakup a couple mm. of years earlier, that you say when we're going back, back and forth, back and forth. Mm. During that experience, I was literally pacing back and forth. My head was saying, listen to him. He can change. My heart was saying, no, he'll never change. You made up your, you made up your decision. And my head's going, no, but listen to him. Like it's such a waste of all that time you spent together. You can be together. My heart, I was like, it was so bad. And I was literally this way. This way, this way, and in the end, I had to go. I'm gonna, f- I'm gonna trust my gut. Like it was my mm. gut decision. It was mm. literally I have to listen to my head or my gut. What do I, what do I listen to? And I listened to my gut. And as soon as I made the final decision, I had this huge sense of relief. Mm. And at that moment, I realized I can trust my gut with these big decisions so when it came to leaving my job my gut was telling me it's the right thing to do and they offered me like when I left when I quit my job my company offered me a role doing whatever I wanted they said you can do communication you can do business development we don't want you to leave we value you we'll off like you can go to the US have a go traveling for a couple months come back we'll have a job waiting for you and that was a huge safety net for me but it didn't take me long I didn't need long to think about it my gut Mm was telling me no this is the right thing to do and that's and that's what I did oh, amazing and so when you made that decision Christina were you already running your coaching business on the side or was this like it just spawned out of it no my idea was to um, create a podcast mm-hmm. for architecture and design students that was my first business idea because mm-hmm. that's what I knew at the time 
Yeah. I was like, architects need this. They don't teach us this in school. It's genius. I'm going to create this this thing. So I created a, a podcast with the intention of creating an ebook, selling that ebook and making millions of dollars and living <laughs> on the beach and checking my email once a week, just like Tim Ferriss does. Yes. That was my plan. <laughs> and so I, I was still working while I started the podcast, but I wasn't coaching. I wasn't doing anything that mm-hmm. yet. Mm-hmm. And then I was telling people about my podcast and so. Someone said to me, you know, schools will actually pay you to talk about this stuff. You can lecture about this. And I was like, really? I'm like, be a speaker? Because that had never even occurred to me. And mm-hmm. she said, yeah, yeah, you could totally do this. And that's when that idea was planted into my head where I was like, maybe I could turn this into a, like, actual business that's not just about selling an ebook but it's also mm-hmm. about working with people face to face and as i started to then do that i discovered that i really loved it and now like i don't want to sit on a beach and check my email once a week i love working with people mm-hmm. i love speaking to audience and um and and being able to like it's so rewarding for me um yeah. doing that oh. um so i quit my job and I went traveling for that whole year and mm-hmm. I, I just left Australia because I was like, I need to cut my ties with all my networks here who don't, they don't understand what I'm trying to do. Everyone was like, oh, Christina's lost herself. She's just going to go and like, <laughs> she's just going to go traveling and she'll be back. She'll be back doing architecture. Yeah. What's a podcast? Isn't it? So that's what it was like. So when I went overseas, I, I traveled and I kept doing the, the podcast. And when I got back at the end of that year, that's when I switched to the C method and launched my business officially Mm -hmm. um, doing coaching workshops, training and and speaking. Nice. Nice. And talk us through that shift. I mean, like what happened in that shift from you to, to, you know, be focused on design students and architects, right. Or future architects to becoming a Mm. coach. I mean, like how does that, how did that shift happen for you? Well, firstly, it was a couple of things. Firstly, when I was traveling, I was meeting tons and tons of podcasters and business owners and people in online business. And I started getting a huge response from them. Mm. I was, people were saying to me, Christina, you're so creative. Christina, we love you. Christina, we love that you're this and you're that. And I'm like, wow. At first I was a bit overwhelmed. I was like, you don't even know me. Um, but after a while, I was like, this is great. I'm, mm. I don't really like Americans. I want to stay here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was, so I was getting all this response from this different, um, this different audience, this different target market. And I thought maybe I should work with these people instead mm-hmm. because at the same time, so my first podcast was called Presentation Skills for Design Students. So that was the name of the show. Yep. Turns out students don't give a shit about presentation skills. <laughs> yeah. They just want to go to the bars and party, right? They just want to, well, they get graded on their projects. And if, if, you, if you are or if, you've heard, if you know an architecture student or an architect, you'll know that they, they spend a lot of time at the office, a lot of time working, working, working. And you get graded on your project, but you don't get graded very heavily on how you present your project and that's what I was trying to help them with the public speaking part because Mm -hmm. I discovered as an architect that if you can speak if you can sell yourself if you can pitch to clients then you're going to be way more successful than a person who's a good designer but can't talk to anyone Mm -hmm. right so I was like I want to help students at that level to build this skill so that they can be better at being architects and more Mm -hmm. successful Mm -hmm. but when you're a student that's not a priority for you and even though you need it you don't necessarily want it. Uh, now I work with people who are at least, I don't know, in their late twenties, mm-hmm. twenty late twenties to, to late thirties. That's the the biggest audience for my podcast, and that's the general demographic dem- demographic of my clients. They're mm-hmm. people who are at the stage of their careers where they are being thrown into these positions that they weren't expecting or they've, they've not learned how to, how to do, you know, mm. they don't know how to present. They don't know how to speak to clients in a certain way or present at meetings or, or go to conferences and represent their company, but they're being forced into this and they're freaking out going, Oh my God, no one's ever um, 
taught me how to do this. Yeah. So, and then they're at the point where they're willing to invest in their professional development rather than just having graduated and they're like, mm. oh, yay, shiny, like <laughs> people work. And it's all a bit of a novelty and they don't really see the value in it. Mm. So it was a big learning, a big learning um, experience for me. Amazing, amazing. And I'm guessing as you develop yourself, you got more into confidence, you got more into understanding yourself and where your confidence, I guess, comfort zone stood and how you wanted to always expand on that. And so for someone who's listening to the show here, Christina, if they want to start expanding their, their own confidence, their own comfort zones, what's the one or two first steps you think they should take? In regards to, I assume you're talking in regards to communication. Uh, yeah, or is this <laughs> that's all that confidence is coming from, right? It's just how you show up, how you look and how you present yourself. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, firstly, and this goes for if you're about to get up and speak to a group or if you're going to a networking event, right? Mm -hmm. You've got to firstly believe that what you have to share is valuable and worthy. Mm -hmm. Because if you rock into a social situation thinking what I've got to share is like, no, no one finds me interesting. Nothing I say is smart or useful or fun, or funny. If you go into an, a situation with that attitude, then of course you're not going to be confident, mm. right? So the very first step is to really believe in your own self-worth, mm. right? Believe in your value. And the one practical thing you can do is to ask people who know you well, ask, ask them, what do I do well? What's one thing that I do well? Mm -hmm. And then ask them, why is this valuable to you? And this is so powerful because the, you, you will have these blind spots where you don't realize that what you do has, has enormous value to others. Um, I, I sent this question out to people who sign up for my free small talk course and I had one woman write back to me and she said Christina to me you play the ukulele well and if you listen to my podcast you know what I'm talking about um and she said and this is valuable to me because it shows me that you can be funny and quirky and you don't need to be this slick perfect entrepreneur to be successful she said you've you've inspired me to start my own business and I was like, oh, my God. Like, I was just playing the ukulele for a bit of fun mm -hmm. and to demonstrate to people how I'm building my own skill with something random. Yeah. But to someone else, that actually, the value that that provides is, is huge, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and it inspired her to do something that I, I never, I would never would have imagined. Yeah. So if you can, so, yeah. yeah. So if you can ask people this, you know, you get these responses back and you go, Wow. People say that, I don't know, I'm a good listener or I speak well or, and then this could be valuable to them because you make them feel good about themselves mm. or you inspire them to do something, right? And when you know these things, what you're doing is valuable, then you'll go into a situation feeling much more confident about yourself. Mm -hmm. And I love that is, you know, we all talk about blind spots and usually when we talk about blind spots, we talk about the stuff that we, with the mistakes that we do or the things that we're not actually good at that we don't see. But I love how you highlight this is that we also have blind spots in the stuff that we do do very well at. Mm. The things that we're so great at that maybe we take for granted because we just, it's natural to us. It just happens all the time. This is what I'm good at. And I love that you bring that up. And I, I love how you use that story about you playing the ukulele and what that inspired from someone else. And I think this is why it's so important for everyone to be confident. Everyone who's listening here is that, you know, no matter how you carry yourself, and this is what Christina is saying, is that you're always an example. You're always going to be an example. Even the people or the people that look at you, see you, they're not going to tell you that, you know, they inspired you or that you inspired them, sorry. Then, you know, you're always being looked up to as a role model, no matter where you go. People might not tell you. But that doesn't mean you mm -hmm. should try and do your very best and be the leading example all the time. And so I love that you did that and I love that you shared that story because that, that's a huge, powerful moment there for everyone listening here that, you know, you can, you, anything you do that looks simple and normal, People are going to get inspired by it. And I love that, Christina. And so, you know, Christina, it, it hurts me, really. It hurts me. To, we've got to start wrapping up this show here so that we can keep the time because I think, you know, they can go so much more into the confidence, into understanding that way. And so we're going to go into our quick five question rounds and I'm excited to ask you our signature question, Christina. Okay? It's called the time travel moment. If you could go back to any moment in your life, Christina, 
And go back to little Christina and just give her one piece of advice that you know today. You know, when would you go back to it and what would you tell her? Oh, do I have to answer this quickly? Is that the point? Oh, take your time. <laughs> I'm not going to show you. you, know, I would, you know, I would actually go back to my 15-year-old self and mm. say, get a job. Mm. Because my my mum, she's she's Chinese and she... Um, she was very much like study hard, study hard. Like you don't have to get a job now, study, study hard so you can get a good job later. And um, now looking back, I wish I had gotten a job or that they'd forced me to get a job because that would have taught me more about how to deal, how to deal with people and different types of work. And um, even if it is work, you know, doing working as a checkout chick at the supermarket, you know, you, you sort of learn, you learn what you like, what you dislike about certain jobs. And i believe that would have helped me make a more informed decision when I left school. Oh, that's a powerful like lesson. Cause I also feel that too. Exactly. Like you, my Asian parents are like, you know, Richard, don't, don't, don't go to the job. You don't need money. We'll give you money whenever you need it, but just study, just study. And it's <laughs> study, like, study, study, study. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now I'm like, Oh man, I'm screwed. I don't know how to handle rejection so well. You know, when I first start business, <laughs> I don't know how to ask myself. I don't know how to do this. And you know, I think that's huge advice. And I think that's something I want to carry forward with my kids. It's like when you, mm. not even 15, when you hit 12, go do the newspaper rounds, all right? Don't give a crap what you're doing. Even if there's no newspaper, yeah. go do that, right? I'll be sending my kids to hustle. I'll be like, you hustle, hustle, hustle. That's what I get my kids to do. Yeah, like, Mommy, what's hustle mean? It's like, here, I'll show you. <laughs> awesome. Go ask for that thing at a discount. Go get a discount. Go hustle for it. <laughs> Love that. And the next question I have here, Christina, is obviously, you know, in, in order for you to be able to coach people and do what you do with your business and the C method, you know, you've learned a lot, right? You've read a lot of books, I'm assuming. And if there's just one book that's like a total must read for anyone who's listening and watching here, what book would you recommend? Oh, you've probably had someone say for our work week before. Have you? <laughs> yes, we that, have. And I only say that I only say that book. I know it's almost cliche now, mm -hmm. um, but but it it literally changed my life. Like when I read it, it like one chapter in, I picked the book up and I was like, "Escape the nine to five. What? I like my job. I don't know what you're talking about. One chapter in, I was like, "Oh my god, I hate my job. I'm out." Uh, like one chapter in. Um, but if I can recommend, if I can recommend another one. Um, let me think. Oh, here's, here's a sort of, here's a financial one actually for you. I've just finished reading. No, I'll give you a communication one. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Pitch Anything is yeah. an incredible book by Oren Claff, mm -hmm. K-L-A-F-F. Um, really, really, really good book on pitching. It'll make you look at things differently and it's very well written. And if you get the audio book version, he narrates the, the book and he does a very, very good job of it so um check that one out pitch anything awesome we'll put that into the show notes uh the next thing i wanted to ask you here christine this is for all the men listening because i think this christine in all your travels you've probably seen and you know interact with a lot of guys and i feel that the modern world is like you know so far ahead and the modern day woman like yourself is you know up there with what the modern world needs but men are men are lagging behind yeah men are not stepping are up I feel like that, right? I feel like that. And, you know, with what I see around here. And so for the, for your, from your perspective, right, what do you think the modern world needs? What's the one thing the modern world needs of more men today? What does the modern world need of men? Yeah, what's one thing that these men need to start epitomizing or taking in so that they can just become the man that the world needs them to be today? <laughs> you know, I've got a message for Australian men. <laughs> Here we go, yeah. <laughs> Start asking girls out face to face. Ooh, what do you mean by that? No more on the, on the text? <laughs> no more text, no more inviting girls to parties and trying to get them drunk so they'll hook up with you. It do, it's so lame. Seriously. Yeah. Okay, when I first went to America, I thought, this is fantastic. The men there, they will come up to you as a woman and be like, hey, so I think you're kind of cute. Do you mind if I take you for a drink? Boom. I'd say yes, even for them having the balls to do that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in Australia, it's, I don't know, you guys are so afraid of being rejected. So yeah. afraid. And so what? She says no. It's like she wasn't right for you anyway. So go to the next person. Mm -hmm. So 
And, and I know it's really scary. And I've put myself out there before for a guy. Here's something for you guys. Go to um, thecmethod.com slash rejection if you want to hear <laughs> a really embarrassing story. But I put it out there because it's yeah. important to hear it. Yeah. cmethod.com slash rejection. Mm-hmm. Um, look, if you can, if you can um, deal with the possibility that someone's going to tell you no mm-hmm. when you go up to them and ask them for something, right? Mm-hmm. If you can accept that that's going to happen, it'll be much easier, firstly. And secondly, if you can get comfortable with that fact that that will happen and get comfortable with it happening, mm-hmm. that will help to build your confidence in so many other areas of your life. It's not just about dating. It's also mm-hmm. the same at work, mm-hmm. right? Or if you're starting a business, yeah. right? So... <laughs> you can start somewhere else by like, I don't know, asking people for the time or some, some striking up a conversation with, oh, like a conversation with someone. But like, if you can pick up the balls to go, Hey, do you want, can I take you out for a drink without any alcohol being involved? Then mm-hmm. you're, you're well ahead of most Australian men. I, I promise you. I <laughs> uh, love her. Love her, Christina. And as we start wrapping up with these final questions here, I want to ask you this, right? So as a mm. confidence coach, as someone who helps people with building their communication skills, what is true confidence? What, how would you describe what true confidence actually looks like? To me, true confidence is not giving a shit about what other people think of you. Mm-hmm. If you can do that one thing and let go of mm. your fears of what other people think of you, then it it's so incredibly empowering. And that confidence will radiate off you. People can people can sense it. They can smell that. And they may not even know what it is. They may not know what it is about you, but they'll be like, geez, that I don't know what it is, but that that person's awesome. They're cool. They're like just hold themselves well. Mm-hmm. And I find myself admiring when I meet people, you know, day to day the ones who I admire the most are the ones who I, I look at them and I go, they actually really don't care like mm. what other people think of them. They're just happy being themselves and they, they don't care if they don't care about everyone liking them. Mm. Um, to me, that's true confidence. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And as we wrap up here, Christina, with one last question, if you know, you had 30 seconds left to live right, and you're surrounded by your loved ones, the people you've made an impact on, your friends, your family, everyone who means the most to you, what would you leave them with? The password to my blog. (laughs) Keep it going. Keep it going. (laughs) Can you post for me? I'm kidding. I'd probably say to them, uh, I'd probably say to them, you know, you don't have to live your life the way other people expect you to. You know, go make it happen for yourself because life is very, very short. Beautiful. That's the shortest answer I've given. Uh, whole interview. <laughs> Quick fire it was. And so, Christian, thank you <laughs> so much for jumping on the show. If people want to learn more about yourself and the C Method, where's the best place they should go to? They can go to thecmethod.com and that's the letter C. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. And finally, Christine, was there anything else you wanted to leave us with that we didn't get a chance to cover on the show today? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Let's not get into that because it'll just, it'll just keep, keep going on and on and on. Subscribe to my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's, called, it's, called, it's called Stand Out, Get Noticed. If you want to uh, be inspired to get out of your comfort zone and try something you've never done before, go and listen to that because there's plenty of examples where I've put myself on the line and I've come out of it the other end a much better, more confident individual. (laughs) Love that. We'll throw all those in the show notes as well. So, guys, this wraps up another episode of the Forge Your Life podcast today with the lady herself, the C method, Christina (laughs) Cantor. And I want you to do this. She knows this. I know this. She doesn't want to keep this a secret. This should not be kept a secret. So if you want, I would love it for you to actually go on iTunes and rate the show so that we can get Christina's message and all the other guests' message out there. And, of course, you can head on over to richardfood.com to catch the show notes and all the resources Christina has shared here on the show. And, of course, finally, guys, remember to go out there, go live with love, and go smash it. I'll see you again on the next one.